The family of Prophet Musa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a family that produced some of the finest of individuals to ever come into existence Prophet Musa being one of them Harun being one of them alayhi musalatu wassalam and from the exact same family came an individual from the same bloodline from the same relatives who may have eaten from the same food and who perhaps was nurtured under the same roof as Prophet Musa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or at least in some instances in his early life is a man called Qarun or otherwise known as Korah as is mentioned in biblical and rabbinical scripture what was his issue with the messenger of the time Qarun was from the people of Musa Qarun he oppressed his family he oppressed his people he felt self-sufficient and therefore not in need of Allah and we had given him so much treasure that the keys of which caused a band of strong men it caused them burden and fatigue to carry them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala simply draws our attention to the keys that lead to the rooms and the vaults that contain the treasures of Qarun. These keys, if you were to try to carry them, it required a group of strong men to merely lift it. What then about the wealth that is behind those keys? When his people said to him, don't become proud because Allah does not like those who are proud. And then they gave him a set of advice about how to deal with the wealth that Allah had blessed you. They gave Qarun four bits of advice, which was so beautiful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala eternalized it in the Quran. Four boxes that need to be ticked. If you manage to tick them, you have passed the test of wealth. What did they say to him? Number one, they said to him, use that which Allah has given you to pursue the hereafter. Number two, and do not forget your portion of dunya. Number three, and do good the same way Allah did good to you. Number four, and don't spread corruption on the land. Allah does not love those who spread corruption. Perfect advice. Brothers and sisters, those who managed to enter Jannah through their money, it was because they had ticked all four of these boxes. Three is not enough. Subhanallah. Ya Allah, they are saying to him, Qarun, what you have is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and life is going to come at a standstill very soon you shall be rendered into a motionless corpse very soon you shall be lowered into your grave don't become deceived by what you have in your savings Harun use your resources as a ladder a stairway to, to prepare for your Jannah O Harun give the zakah from your wealth and when you give your zakah O Harun don't think that you are being kind to the miskin and the poor person, but you are removing the haqq of that miskin from your wealth and you are giving it to him. But don't forget your portion of dunya. We are not saying to you, bring yourself back to square one. Don't keep any money for yourself. Enjoy the good things Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you in the life of this world. In fact, it belongs to the believers and it will be purely theirs on the hereafter. And do good the same way Allah has done good to you, O Qarun. O Qarun, has Allah Almighty fallen short towards you? Is there something in the life of this world that you crave, O Qarun, that Allah has not given you? What is it that causes you to not pray to Allah, to prostrate to Allah, to cry for Allah, to beg Allah for Jannah? What is it? Has Allah fallen short towards you, O Qarun? And don't spread corruption on the land. Allah does not love those who spread corruption. Not only was he a corrupt person in of himself, he wanted to outsource corruption to others. Part of Qarun's corruption included the following. The defamation and the slander of the good doers. And in doing so, Qarun resorted to a old yet a very new technique, an ever new technique. 
he paid a woman to go and stand in public and to say to everybody, Musa did such and such with me. She went to a gathering where Musa was found. She made the announcement. And Musa's heart, as is the situation with every chaste and righteous Muslim male and female, anything could be harmed but my chastity. His heart fell. And he prayed two rak'at, seeking help from Allah. This calamity. He approached her and he said to her, I ask you in the name of Allah, who commanded you to do this? And she cried and she said it was Qarun. And instantly there and then she repented to Allah and she sought his forgiveness. It's an old technique, but it is ever new. However, Qarun did not see what he was doing as corruption. He saw it as business as usual. He saw it as intelligent marketing. He saw it as hard work, his sweat, his experience, his knowledge. Qarun, he turned around and said to his people, I have been given this because of knowledge that I have. It's nothing to do with God, Allah Almighty, giving me things. You keep your hocus pocus to yourself. It's knowledge that I have, which is why I have this, I have this wealth. This response of Qarun was so detestable and so disgusting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the camera or the limelight away from his people and he told us how he responded to Qarun. Allah took it upon himself to respond to Qarun. What was the response? Does Qarun not know that in the past we have destroyed people before him who were far more powerful than him and they had a lot more money? Oh Qarun, if you are saying that the fact that I've given you money is a sign of my pleasure towards you, then how come in the past I destroyed people who had more money than you? And then Allah concluded the ayah by saying, and the criminals will not be asked about their sins on the day of judgment. Qarun decided to challenge the advice physically. Qarun decided to go out in a parade. Instantly, he came out in front of his people in his splendor. And imagine, imagine, actually it is difficult really to imagine the type of splendor, this type of parade, this theatrical act, this entourage, and the, this parade of Qarun. And the community came out and they began to glare and drool. Those who aspired for the life of this world, they said, we wish we had what Qarun he has. He really is a man of good fortune. But there was another part of the community that advised them. Woe to you. The reward of Allah is better for those who believe and they do good deeds. Have you forgotten? Don't be blinded by the wealth of Qarun. But they couldn't see it. They, they really couldn't see it. One group who said, we wish we had what he had. And the second group, the people of knowledge, they said, the reward of Allah is better than what Qarun he has. So what happened? The command of Allah Almighty finally arrived. To Qarun and all of his property. He's out now showing the world everything he possesses with no intention other than fame and to challenge Allah publicly. This is what I think of you, O Musa, and this is what your advice means to me. Have a look at this. The command of Allah arrived. Allah said, and Therefore we caused the earth to swallow him up and all of his wealth. And this was the end of Qarun. Within the blink of an eye, his wealth, his reputation, his arrogance was now not six feet under, many feet under. This was the end of Qarun. Where are those who used to say to him, we've got your back, we are your friends, we will support you through thick and thin, regardless of what happens, we are your homeboys, we've got your back. We're with you till the bitter end, they said to him. Where are they? When the command of Allah arrived, they fell into the ground with him. And nor was he a man who could defend himself. All gone. When the punishment of Allah Almighty arrived, it affected Qarun and all of those who were around him. All of the people who supported him, who saw what he was doing but perhaps stayed quiet. They fell down with him. That's when the command of Allah Almighty arrives, he will not pick and choose. He will know who to take. Everything was taken, nothing was spared. 
forget about Qarun, forget about his legacy, pretend he never existed, move on. Now we are reaching the conclusion of the story. Those people who said, oh, we wish we had something like Qarun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, don't forget about them. Because they've got other ideas now. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said instantly, the very next day, those people who wanted to be like Qarun, they began to say, it is as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how, how it is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala extends his provisions to whomever he wills and he restricts if it wasn't for the fact that Allah showed graciousness towards us he would have caused the earth to swallow us too oh how it is that those who deny Allah and are ungrateful they never prosper they just realize that, that what they wanted yesterday and what they craved and what they begged Allah for and what perhaps they challenged the knowledge of Allah for not giving them something like it, they realized that that was, that was a death wish. That is the home of the hereafter, Allah says. Which we will assign for those who do not desire any loftiness in the life of this world and they don't aspire for any corruption. And the best outcome belongs to the people of piety. Jannah is for the people who stay close to the earth. Jannah is for those who are humble towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and humble towards the servants and slaves of Allah Jalla Jalla.